So a couple of days ago, I watched through Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime, and despite the mixed reception that it's had from a lot of people, when I finished watching it, I was surprised by what I'd just seen. In a good way, that is. I thought it was shot beautifully, was excellently performed, and it concluded in a way that evoked emotions for me that I didn't possibly expect to experience when I first put it on. However, one episode in particular stood out for me, and that was episode 6. It wasn't the most action-filled episode that put on a massive show or even had the most glamour, but what it did do was it executed the basics extremely well and allowed us to see the chemistry that both John and Jane had with each other, the deterioration of their marriage, and it also shone a light on real issues that couples go through when their relationships are breaking down. It just felt so real when watching it, so I thought I'd share why I feel this beautifully crafted episode was perfect and why it's a must-watch. So let's get into it. Here is why Mr. and Mrs. Smith Episode 6 is perfect. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The background of the episode. So with regards to this episode, context is key. Right up until we got to Episode 6, we'd seen John and Jane go from being strangers, to being lovers, to being in a deep relationship. But the whole thing that people often say about there being issues when it comes to working with people that you love was something that came to the forefront in this specific episode. We'd been seeing how Jane was the better spy when compared to John, and that he was feeling inferior in terms of their relationship, and that he felt like she was taking control when it came to the work that they were doing. Hi Hi was even recognizing that Jane was better and had offered her the option to replace John with somebody else. So there was definitely tension between them, an intolerance that was starting to become present and just a sense of general fatigue when it came to their relationship and the different pathways that it felt like they were going on. Something which feels like it can often be present when it comes to relationships in real life. So now with the context out of the way, let's get into the real meat of the episode and how it got everything across. The development of the way that the episode looked. One thing that I thought was just simply stunning and perfectly depicted the breaking down of John and Jane's relationship in this episode was by the way that the episode changed the way that it looked as time went on over the course of the three weeks that the episode was set, and also the composition of the framing of the shots and how that would change too. During the first section of the episode, the colors in the shot were vibrant, bright, and warm, and John and Jane were slightly more optimistic with smiles on their faces. They were also sitting right next to each other on the sofa to the point where they were touching as they were discussing their relationship with the therapist. The next week, when the both of them returned to therapy, we saw that they were slightly further apart and Jane had a cushion on top of her, almost like this subconscious barrier that she was putting between the both of them. So they were no longer touching and that one degree of separation which was the cushion did feel like a wall. As well as that, the colour looked like it had been drained from the shot slightly, so what was once warm now felt like a day that was full of grey and the room very much reflected that, showing that the couple's relationship hadn't improved over the course of the previous week, and the issues were still present. Then, when it came to the final therapy session that they had at the end of the episode, when comparing this to the first, you can really see the difference in what the director was going for and what she meant by it. There was no longer a subconscious barrier, but they were now sitting on completely different sides of the sofa, not looking at each other, and all colour from the shot had been drained completely. It was just grey and dark, truly reflecting the mood, mindset, and deterioration of the pair's relationship over the course of the runtime, showing us that they were at a point in their time together where it was at its worst and the therapy wasn't helping. They were almost just on two different pathways in life, despite caring for each other and loving one another. There was just something that couldn't be fixed. The composition of the framing of the shots and the way that they looked in terms of a colour perspective was just remarkable, and it was a real subconscious way of reinforcing what was happening in that episode and assisting the overarching narrative where John and Jane were going through issues that just couldn't get solved. The Emotional Climax the climax of this episode is something that I truly loved, and it really highlighted the amazing writing that was done behind this scene, as well as the convincing, real performances too. Throughout the entirety of the episode, we'd been seeing the couple in therapy and gradually growing more and more distant, and this part of the episode was us seeing the largest argument that they'd had taking place. We saw that John was trying to show Jane different things whilst they were out in the wild. He was being light-hearted and just having fun whilst they were on a mission together, rather than taking it extremely seriously. He wanted to have fun with her, something which he felt like they hadn't done in a while. 
However, when they sat down, we saw that one small lie that had been bothering Jane for a while ended up being brought up, and despite the fact that it was just a white lie, it ended up snowballing into a large argument which meant that all of the issues that they had with one another ended up coming out and taking the place of what the original argument was about. This was an approach that felt very real in the way that it was delivered and progressed. People confess to their issues and they tend to come out when the ball starts rolling. And a lot of the time, the argument starts over something so small. So I thought that was a really nice touch. What started as Jane being annoyed about John lying about reading The Prophet turned into an all-out argument where it got to Jane being annoyed about how obsessed she thought John was with his mother. We'd seen the pacing and rhythm of this scene being quite back and forth and almost like a game of tennis. But when John's mother was brought up, we saw him hold the conversation completely and mention the reason that he's like the way that he is with his mother because he feels that he owes it to her as he's the only man in her life. And following his dad dying, he wants to be there for her to make sure that she's okay. Something that you could really see that he was passionate about and was a main focus of his. I appreciated the care that was omitted during this scene, and also the gradual increase in pace and volume as the argument was building to the crescendo that Donald Glover delivered with John. John acts how most people would, and like I said earlier, it just added to the realism that was present in a TV show that is quite unrealistic in the sense that none of us could see ourselves doing what they do for work. But their very human arguments and their very human emotions bridge that connection and make scenes like this feel all the more real and like we're truly feeling what they are. You could feel the emptiness that Jane felt while sat around the fire. The fact that she felt that she was second best, didn't like the fact that she was lied to and was uncertain about if she wanted to be with him. Plus, you could also feel the burning love that John had for his mother and the anger and outrage that he felt about Jane when it came to her bringing up his mother again, something that he'd had to bite his tongue about for far too long. This scene, despite not being extremely large scale, it was one where everything was on the line, and the intimacy of just being out in the woods around a fire under the sky invited us in, and it allowed us to feel exactly what the director wanted us to feel in that specific moment. For me, this is a perfect episode because not only are the performances outstanding, but the visuals are incredible. The score accompanying the scenes are so beautiful and there are some real standout moments when it comes to the way that the episode's been crafted and structured. It's a beautiful depiction of what couples go through and it just felt real. The chemistry between Donald and Maya was just so enjoyable to watch. Throughout the show, some of the best moments came from when they were just together and conversing. And I think that's why this episode is just so good, because it's an episode that's solely dedicated to that. Couples love, fall out of love, go through difficult times, and some stay together and work through it. And this episode showcases exactly that. It's definitely my favorite of the entire season. So, there you have it, why Mr. and Mrs. Smith Episode 6 is perfect. If you want to see a full breakdown on the first season of the show, including the ending explained and my review, then click on the card in the top corner. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. What did you think of this episode? Do you agree with me? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.